nervous to meet you. Thanks. <laughs> Don't be nervous. I'm a normal guy. I'm a normal guy. Mahalo. <laughs> this webinar is being recorded. Okay, continue. Okay. Yes. I'm a normal guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're, in. We're, here, we're, we're here to learn and, and enjoy and develop a dialogue and have conversations and be friends. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Kalani, for joining us today. Uh -huh. And we're live on Facebook now, so I'm going to do a little oh, little okay. spiel, and then we can get ready and we can do your okay. presentation. Let me up the volume here. Okay. okay. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining another installment of the Resilience Webinar Series. Today we're hearing from Kalani Pea, and he is presenting on grant writing tips. Um, I'm Amber Hoy. I am the Program Manager of Fellowships at First Peoples Fund. And Kalani uh, was an Artist and Business Leadership Fellow in 2019. And I got to meet him in person when we were in Phoenix for the fellowship convening. And um, he's truly a ray of light and a delight to be around. Um, <laughs> and uh, the, the First Peoples Fund Resilience Series was developed to continue our work um, to enhance uh, the business and entrepreneurial skills of Native artists and culture bearers, as well as our uh, virtual community during these changing times. So next week, um, the, the webinar series, um, we'll hear from Robert Martinez on protecting your online images. Uh, in July, we'll hear from Jen Martel uh, on networking using virtual platforms. And later in July, we'll hear from uh, James Bacotis on performing arts. And also this Saturday, we have another Saturday Art Live um, with First Peoples Fund host, Brian Parker. And um, if you follow us on Facebook and on Instagram, uh, you'll hear more information about our online and upcoming um, events. So just a few reminders to everyone that's listening, this event is being recorded. So people who can't join us right now can view the webinar at a later date. Um, and if you are in a Zoom room with us, uh, and we join, we have you join the conversation, please keep your mic, mic on mute. And this will be about a 45 minute presentation with a 15 minute um, Q&A. So we'll be asking the audience for input and asking polling questions. Um, if you would like to speak to Kalani directly um, during the Q&A, go ahead and register and jo join the Zoom room. Um, and we'll invite our participants to join later this hour. And um, however, we'll also be funneling questions through uh, Facebook Live. So uh, join and bring your questions and let's get started. So Kalani is a singer of power, sensitivity and charisma. He's one of the most promising talents in the new generation of Hawaiian musicians. He has won two Grammy Awards for best regional roots album, one for each of his um, CD releases. And he is the only Hawaiian artist to win this category. Uh, he's all, his first CD uh, also won him the 2017 Nahoku uh, Hano Hano Awards. This is the Hawaiian Grammy Awards, making music history as the only album to win both the Grammys and the uh, Hoku, Nahoku Award. And he um, has also had quite a bit of success with applying to grants this year. He's um, received 12 various grants during COVID. Um, so let's turn it over Kalani to his presentation. And Kalani, just let me know when you want to sh me to share the screen at all. And I have those documents up for you. Okay, thank you so much, Amber. All right. Ado'ai Billy ni Mikeloha. Aloha! Kakopakahi apau. Velina Mikeloha. O Kalani peako uinoa. No hilo Hawaii mayau. Pane eva i kaua nui, no kio kahaku uohana, no kalapana, eia no nae, aia vo maani i maia noho, nā nā ana i keia aina aloha, ma ke awawa o kalua, o wailuku, o mauna leo, mauna li, o alohe ia kamoana o ke kai, o ia hono o piilani, ke ia vahi o ke ia aina aloha maui nui a kama. You are wondering what in the world is Kalani Pea saying? Wow. I am proud to say that I am a proud Hawaiian immersion graduate. Hawaiian language is one of my official languages. I come from Paneewa, Hilo, Hawaii, where there's lots of mold and mildew and lots of love and aloha. I come from a working class Hawaiian family. I sit here feeling the breeze 
hearing the construction, hearing the ocean breeze right here, the ocean on my lanai from Kahului, the Hono of Kahului. And as we gaze and we look at Mauna Leo, these are my elements. This is Hawaii and I welcome everyone to my very first Zoom webinar regarding grant, grant writing. Tips for grant writing. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, who's on live with me, I'm gonna let you know that I am not an expert. For instance, I'm not a professional writer. I, I think we all get positioned to write a grant when we're passionate, when we're driven, we're motivated, we're enthusiastic about our projects. What are we, what's imperative, right? What are we focusing on, on our projects, on our career, and how are we contributing to our communities, to our people, to our heritage, to our loved ones? How are we representing who we are as people, as first people? And what are you doing with your career pathway? And how are you coming up with this organized plan and having these objectives, these learning outcomes, and being able to write a grant? That truck is too loud. Anyway, getting back to grant writing. I am not a professional grant writer, but I have written grants my whole life since 18 years old. Yeah, basically half of my life. And at 18, I went to college. I finally left Hawaii at 18 years old. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not from a wealthy family. I come from a homestead my whole life. Grew up on a farm, agricultural farm. Had to, I was forced to plant natural resources on our farm and live with pigs and cows and everything else. A homestead is equivalent to a reservation. So I come from a hardworking family. Never seen Disneyland in my life, never experienced all of that. Went to college. My family couldn't pay for my tuition. So I had to apply for grants, merit scholarships, um, and I had to apply for those in order to stay afloat, in order to be successful, in order to receive my bachelor's and master's degrees. My bachelor's degree was important. So I fooled around the first year, and that's what we do as freshmen. And then I completed my degree the, the last four years at Colorado Mesa University, huge cultural shock. I'm a Hawaiian boy out in the middle of a desert. I mean, a desert. I come from the tropics and going to the desert, it was a huge new experience for me. But I applied for Pell Grants, looked at federal grants, merit scholarships, and paid my tuition with just grants. Why? Because loans will be my last resort. The only loan I took out was my other half and I took out a loan for our house. But I've applied for grants because you have to, you have to apply for grants. The grants and the opportunities and the resources are out there. So today we're going to be talking about tips. What works for me as an artist, as a music entrepreneur, I'm owning my own music. My other half and I own a records and entertainment, an independent music label. I started singing at four years old, and then we got into this business five years ago. So as a Hawaiian cultural specialist, and as a language specialist, and as an educator for nearly 10 years at Kamehameha schools, and leaving the teaching position to take this position here as a full-time entertainer, is an opportunity and I want all of us to remember that we all have to try try to apply for these resources they are out there for you okay so we are going to go over the top 10 tips we will also have a screen up with all the resources I've accumulated I've come um, collected um, with cultural grants competitive grants, formula, block grants, all types of grants, COVID-19 grants for, for contemporary arts, for painters, for artists, fellowships, dive into it, okay? The list will come out momentarily. 
And also we're gonna have a poll. I want you guys to get involved. So you guys don't have to deal with me and my animated self for the next 45 minutes so I do not sound boring at all. But there will be a poll in between the, the, the conversations and the dialogue that we're gonna develop. Part of grant writing, ladies and gentlemen, is developing this growth mindset putting yourself into the situation where you're going to take three to four hours to apply for this big fellowship or grant. You're gonna be organized. You're gonna do your best to have that letter of intent, that press kit, and you're gonna do your best to submit all your best work. So let's go over with the top 10 tips for grant writing that works for me and may not work for you but at least you can utilize your own skill. Everybody has a skill here. We all have this proficiency where we can ab we're able to utilize that and grow from that, right? Have that growth mindset and do our best and try. So let's go with the first tip, ladies and gentlemen. And as I'm talking, you know, I'm gonna have to be drinking my coffee and water at the same time, because I'm gonna be talking a lot. All right, our first tip, what works for me as a grant writer is, I wrote, never start with an I statement in any narr narrative. I think I, uh, I, I wrote, I was born, or I, I am a musician. What I'm trying to say that when you start with an I statement, like I, the, the, the reader, the funder already knows who you are. But I mean, you wrote your personal information, you have your personal statement, right? When you write your personal statement or your letter of intent within a press release, immediate release, showing your background or information or your fact sheet, you will like, I, I normally start off with being able to stand near the pristine waters of Hilohanakahi, seeing my grandparents stand firmly on their homestead, they give birth to my father, and here I come, Kalani Pe'a. Something poetic like that, not run on, but I encourage you to open up with something with being able to, when I am trying to, or when I'm contributing to my dot, 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 I think that sounds more uh, less aggressive than starting out with an I narrative. In your proposal, never start with I. Always open up with being able to, many years ago, coming from a homestead or a reservation, the lifestyle was dot, dot, dot. And we're trying to hear your story. I think the funder, the reader is human. The panelists are human. They want to connect with you. And starting off with an I, for me, I don't do that. I just don't do that. Where I know you're trying to sell yourself from the get-go, but I think I learned that from, you know, being in a Hawaiian immersion program, learning Shakespeare in English and Hawaiian. Oh, okay, Midas, Ka'apala, learning Hawaiian, it, in algebra and biology, and being able to speak two languages, our English, um, our English teacher encouraged us to, to not utilize that first narrative, I, because they already know it's you already. Be a little bit more eloquent and poetic at your personal statement or your letter of intent. So that's your first tip that works for me. So let me give you an example state um, being a full-time painter, being a full-time musical artist, being an, being an educator, a cultural specialist, allows me to give, it gives me the opportunity to dot, dot, dot. I think that is so effective and that captures the reader right there, right there. It captures that scholar, the reader, the funder and then bring light of, of writing these statements. So yes, first tip, ladies and gentlemen, never start with an I, don't do that. And I think I've done that a few times and I got rejected. And we're gonna talk about rejection letters later. So that's the first step. 
That's the first tip, all right? Second, second, if you guys are chatting, aloha everyone, aloha. <laughs> second, sell yourself somehow, right? And market well with a great pitch and that is relevant to their question. So what does that mean, Kalani? Well, market yourself on all social media platforms and talk about your work. You know, culturally, from a Hawaiian cultural perspective, we always say our work speaks for, ours, for itself. But when you're writing grants, they want to see your work. They want to see what you've achieved. They want to see your accolades and, your, and, 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 and through that, they're gonna Google you. They're going to go on your social media platforms and they're gonna find whether you're, you have a verified page or whether you have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, uh, they're gonna look at all of your work. They're gonna see if you have music videos, a YouTube video, they're gonna research about you. As much as you are researching about the grant, the funders and the organizers and the scholars and people on the panel are going to Google you. Now let's say that those who created social media deleted all the platforms and you put all of your hard work into it, right? Your demonstrations, your videos. What if you lose everything? What do you have left? And it's important that you go on Wix.com and create your own website. The panelists are going to look at your website. Now, if you've created a Wikipedia page, there are numerous editors that go through they go through a Wikipedia page and they look at fact finding significantly. Create a Wikipedia page, create a website, join TikTok if you have to, that's a whole new audience and you, a whole new demographic. But you must have, you must, you must inform the funder that you have all these social media platforms to, to share your, your work. You also have social proof. We call it social proof. Share your content. And remember that the funders are just human like you. They want, they're going to Google you. They're going to click on your page and they want to see social proof. Share your content consistently. Stop sharing one or two pictures a day of your work. Flood social media. We flood it. As independent artists, we put my team puts 25 to 50 photos and videos in a day. The funders will see that. I encourage you to consistently share your content on all platforms. And part of grant writing, they're going to see those outcomes. They're going to see your work. They're going to see social proof. And always provide new content consistently, consistently share it. Don't be afraid. Do it. Just do it. That's tip number two. Tip number three. Have precise and concise answers while you're answering the funder's question. Whether you're applying for a competitive grant, a cultural grant, a fellowship, and they're only giving you 300 to 400 words, use that max amount. Or if, you're, if, we, or if you have concise answers and it's clear and bold and beautiful, just stick to that. Remember, the panelists have thousands of applications and they're reviewing a lot of work, great work from many, many people of various cultures and ethnic backgrounds with different perspectives and, and with different eloquence and articulation. So in that paragraph, be concise. Tip number three, have precise and concise answers. Don't, re, don't be repetitive with your answers. Um, what I hear, yes, don't be repetitive with your answers. Focusing on answering the question. Focus on why you need the assistance and how these grants will benefit you, your movement in your career pathway, 
and that you have positive learning outcomes. And how is this grant not only benefiting you and your career, ladies and gentlemen, but benefiting your community? And in Hawaiian, we call it Lahui, our people, your heritage. How is it benefiting you and your career? And how is it benefiting your community? And what are you doing as a cultural specialist, as an activist, as a kanaka, as a person, giving back to your community? The organization looks at that as well. That is tip number three. Have precise and concise answers. Stay relevant and always have plans and organized plans. Always have supporting data. What is your data? What is your work? Put that in files, share that. Share your social proof in your websites, right? And all the primary, secondary resources with direct quotes. So what does that mean with direct quotes, ladies and gentlemen? If you are in publications, magazines, it's okay to quote what New York Times or LA Times or the San Francisco Chronicle, talk about it. It's okay to talk about what they're talking about you. You have proof. You have primary resources that they're stating about your artwork that's placed in a gallery. Use direct quotes in your responses in a, in a, in a grant writing, when, when you're going through a grant writing process. Again, concise answers, precise answers, and also it's okay to use a quote or two from an editor from a newspaper that talks about your work. The, um, the funders want to see that. They're gonna ask questions like, what are you doing with your art? What aspired and inspired you to pursue in this particular endeavor? What are you doing to contribute to your communities with your art? I write everything on a notepad first, then I copy and paste that into the application. Sometimes, often, the application is on a Google Doc, so it'll probably save on itself, but always write your responses on a separate notepad. And you're probably gonna be wondering, do I have a second or third eye reviewing my responses? Oh, I may have some grammar issues. I may have some run-ons. But if it's coming from your heart, if it's coming from here, and you're sharing your life and your life's work on a paper, and you're gonna send that out to the funder, they're gonna feel where you are. They're gonna feel your heart, your enthusiasm your interest, your, 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 your interest in writing this grant. So the three, the three tips are there. We're gonna review that after, but I would like to do a poll question at this time. Could we do a poll question um, at this time? Do we have a screen up? Oh my goodness, I'm so bad, I'm not tech savvy. Uh, let's see if uh, Hillary is ready for that, that poll. Okay. All right, we're doing poll question number one. Yes. All right, it's launched. Question number one. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right, do you guys see this, guys? Do you automatically give up on reapplying for the same grant when you receive a rejection letter? Yes or no? Oh, I can't vote. Hosted panelists can vote. So go now. Vote. Yes or no? Do you automatically give up on reapplying for the same grant when you receive a rejection letter? Do you? Do you just give up? And then, then, and then, uh, okay. And then I think we're gonna get, see the results momentarily. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> no, eight people say no. Good, good. Don't, re don't give up. Some of us, get a rejection letter. I've been rejected two, three times. Thank you so much, Hillary. I've been rejected two to three times. The fourth time I apply, and then I, I'll, I'll get the grant. You cannot allow that rejection to prohibit you or inhibit you from defining your success, truly. And some people get reactive about that and write reactive responses on social media saying, I'm not qualified for this and that. You just do not do that. Do not put yourself in the negative light. 
I am so grateful that I applied for the Artist Relief Fund. I think there are about five or six cycles left. They're still reviewing thousands of applications from the first cycle. I applied for the first cycle and they're giving away $5,000 grants for artists worldwide. So I was able to receive that particular grant the second cycle. Do not, do not give up. Do not feel that your work is not valued because you're bringing value to your people and to your community. Continuously apply for these competitive cultural and, and continuation grants. I'm so happy that you guys don't see this rejection letter and go, okay, well, I failed or I really truly suck at it. Don't feel that way. Continuously put that grant in, apply, apply, apply. Awesome. Tip number four, ladies and gentlemen, research and do your homework. Always research about their organizations. Don't just randomly apply. Oh my goodness. Because they're going to come back and go, uh, did you read the description? Did you see that this is for ballet dancers and not musicians? So always research, always read before you answer questions. Get familiar with their mission and their vision. You must build that network and build that, in Hawaiian we call it pilina. Build that connection. Build that bridge with the funder. Build that connection. You need to submit the correct proposal to the right people so that both the proposal or the budget narrative align. And your both interests align as well. Your story stays the same and that's what I try to keep in mind. Your story about who you are and what you do stay the same for your budget and your proposal narrative. So whatever your proposal, you have your press kit, you're responding through your per personal statement, it must align to your budget. S some, some organizations are gonna ask you, we're gonna give you this budget, but can you give us a breakdown? Here's a Google Doc. How are you gonna utilize our grant wisely? And what are the outcomes to that? So number four, research and do your homework. Yes. Number five, and I think I said this, submit your best work of accolades and achievements. Talk about your work. I know from a native perspective, we are so shy and timid to talk about ourselves. I, I don't want to talk about our work. No, you, if you want this grant, you got to talk about your work, ladies and gentlemen. You have to talk about your best work. And if you're proud about it, talk about it. There's a difference of being conceited or condescending or flamboyant versus being confident and proud about your work and how your work going to benefit the community. Now, when, when they ask you to send attachments, send, send your best and your inspirational work. Create, uh, and, and I talked about social media. I talked about YouTube videos, I talked about your website, but create your best work and put them in attachments in a folder. So when you're applying for grants, that is your best work you're gonna submit. You submit the best work to the organization. Number six, are you guys staying with me? Yeah, yeah, okay. Number six, convince the funder or the panelists who's reading your information that you are good at what you do. You are good. Convince the funder that you are good at what you're doing and you know what you are doing. So simple, right? Here's my wise saying that my ancestors would tell me. If you are good at what you do, do it best and try your best in doing it. If you're not good at it, don't do it at all. <laughs> but that's a wise say. But do it. Do your best. Your responses on your proposal exemplify. Um, oh, yes. Have, while, you, while you're formulating precise and clear responses, you need to understand that they're looking at what you need on this grant and not what you want. Why do you need this grant? Why do you need the grant? You must have the confidence to know that how you're gonna utilize the funds for your organization that has learning outcomes and that you have data to prove that and that you are honest. 
you are heartfelt and honest about your answers. Don't fabricate. Do not lie. They are going to find out. <laughs> Backbiters, be honest about your responses. And you must present an amazing outline and highlight your achievements, your work ethic, and your contributions to your community. That's tip number six. Oh, time is flying fast. Okay. So let's do tip number seven in the poll question. Present a logical answer with learning objectives and outcomes. So again, outcomes, outcomes, outcomes are important. Whether you're learning outcomes and learning objectives, what is your goal or objectives utilizing this grant? Your statement should have an ultimate goal um, in the first three sentences of your letter of intent. What is your story, your personal connection to the work that you do? What is the problem first? We all have struggles. We've all faced trials and tribulations as Native people, right? Emotionally, spiritually. And we do what we do because we're passionate about our work. But what is the problem first? Identifying the problem. You state that. Talking about who you are. What do you do? Then write the learning outcomes with a solution. You have a solution and a plan. And then there's results. So I, again, in a personal statement, introduction, who you are, don't start with an I narrative, talk about your work, what drives you, what aspired you to do this, what is the problem, what is the solution, and what are your results? How are your art outcomes benefiting your organization or the communities you serve? Think of those answers, those questions. Your answers must be logical, yeah? Introduction, identifying the problem, finding solutions, and having a result plan. And also, at the end of the result, we people, as natives, we like to have a self reflection plan process, we go through this self-evaluation, right? We look at our peers, we ask about how is our web, how is this webinar, right? Or how is this workshop? How do we do about, can you give me, a, can you rate this? We're always asking for responses and it's okay to have an evaluation plan so that you can reflect on how great your proposal was and how you got awarded and how are you going, how are you going to utilize this award? So let's go to poll number uh, two. Poll two. Let's do a poll question. Number two, ladies and gentlemen. Number two. Number two. Do you apply for more loans than grants? Yes or no? Do you apply for more loans than grants? And I spell then correct. Okay, good. Oh. T-H-A-N. Vote, yes or no. Do you apply for more loans? Do you just become so lazy and just go, I'm just going to apply for the loan instead of a grant? Vote, vote, vote. <laughs> no, very good. Mahalo, that's a good answer. Loans will be our last resort, other than buying a car or a house. When it comes to these grants, they are out there. They are out there for you, ladies and gentlemen. They are out there. Thank you so much for voting. Always study and do your research on a loan or grant that you are applying for. Never take the loan as the first option because you eventually have to pay it back. I never had a loan throughout my whole college career. I was so grateful to take the springtime and summertime, because the, normally the awards are handed out in the fall for any grants, merit scholarships. You take that time, you take that three to four hour window of opportunity throughout the day, gather your data, and you apply for that grant. I forced, I'm sorry, I have to use the word, I forced my siblings to apply for grants and scholarships while attending college, so they don't have to do with the big bill at the end of the day. So yes, apply for grants. Okay, where are we? Are we on tip number eight? We are almost there. We're, we're almost there. We are almost there. Number eight, 
nor the po ayapili nui or the main concept of the grant. So po ayapili meaning the overall concept. Don't go off tangents. Stick to facts and data while you're responding to a grant. What is your data and what is the outcome? I'm all about all outcomes, ladies and gentlemen. I tell my students the importance of having learning objectives and having outcomes. What are these outcomes and how are you gonna provide these outcomes so that the funders see the success of your project, right? And how are you giving back to your community? Learning objectives, goals, data connect to the mission and vision of the funder and the organization. That is tip number eight. Tip number nine. Oh my gosh, goodness, we still have participants and attendees. I, I didn't bore you. I'm, thank you for staying in. Anyway, getting back to tip number nine. And I'm willing to answer any questions after this, right? So going back to tip number nine, explain the specifics of the project. What is that? The funder will probably understand your beliefs and values by the time they ask, okay, we got your career, your work, but they're always gonna ask you this, how are you contributing your work to your people? And be bold and beautiful, ladies and gentlemen, when you answer that question. How are your work contributing? That is such a big word, contribute. How are your work contributing to your people? Remember this word, do not be repetitive in your answers. Talk about your organized plans and always have objectives, always have outcomes. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I'm, I'm letting you guys know that the that you have to have, I, I, these are tips. These are tips that work for me. And I always keep this in mind when I'm getting, when I'm getting grants. And I'm gonna tell you guys something. Yes, I've got rejected twice, but I'm so honored to receive the AIP 2020. I was approved to talk about it. Um, the Native Launchpad Western Arts Alliance. Huge, huge fellowship for the next three years. Why? Because you have to be persistent and determined to write. I got denied twice. This is my third time. So never give up. If, you, if you've applied for WA, you've done the same thing, and you got rejected, I've been rejected, it's okay. The door will shut on you, but remember there's hundreds of doors that will open after that. And in Hawaiian, I call it You are gonna put up that sailboat. You are the vessel, ladies and gentlemen. You are the vessel of our indigenous people. You are going to get in that boat, whether you're dealing with the elements around you and that will guide you, you're gonna deal with trials and tribulations and struggles. And yes, I was persistent and wonderful. The wonderful, the wonderful person who called and awarded this for me said, Kalani, you've been persistent. We've seen you grow and we've seen your work. We've seen your best work. And I cried. That's what we do as natives. Oh, for Hawaiians, we're emotional. I think that's different for everybody in various cultures. For the Hawaiian people, we emotional, we cry. So I cried because I was grateful. And it's okay to cry. It's okay to be grateful. So yes, have an organized plan. And know your specific audience, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get to tip number 10, let's do poll number three. There's... Woohoo! Thank you guys so much. Yay! Yes. Continue applying. Continue applying. Yes. Number, yes. Do you get lazy applying for grants because the process is longer than applying for a loan? Do you feel lazy that you put it off? Yes or no? Do you get lazy applying for grants because the process is long and you don't want to spend three to four hours to apply for a grant? Oh, I'm just going to apply for a loan. It's so easy to pay off a high interest rate, right? Do you get lazy? Do you really? I wonder if you guys say yes or no on that one. Sometimes I feel... Oh, the coffee is going to help me get through the day. I got to spend three hours today to apply for a big fellowship. 
Now let's see the answers. You know, yeah, <laughs> oh. 13% of us get lazy. Why? Because we're busy. You guys are busy, busy, productive kanaka, productive people. You have families to take care of, right? We have other excuses. Yeah, we, we make all kinds of excuses. It's okay to get lazy. But if you feel that it's imperative to sit down at your laptop and gather all of your data and all of your best work and apply for a grant, there's a 50-50 chance that you will receive it or not. It's an award-winning proposal or not. But at least you try. At least you do it. I cry often because I'm tired and I, I'm exhausted at the end of the day running my own music label, publishing company as an independent artist. But ladies and gentlemen, we all have bills to pay, right? I am a two-time Grammy Award winner, yes. As a Nahoku Hanohano Award winner, I was nominated 17 times and lost 16 and only won one award for the Nahoku Hanohano Hawaii Premier Awards. Like what I said, many doors will shut on you, but many will open up for you. Stay focused, stay organized, and consistently share your work. All right, I have a bonus tip, but that was the last one. Oh, number 10, number 10. Uh, I like to say this before my bonus tip. Number 10, goodness gracious. I'm so sorry, well, hold on. You guys are cutting grass at this time? Really? Oh, okay. So via HOA fees, I pay for that. That's, that's what I work for. So vaiho kahilahila makahale. Leave your shamefulness at home. It's okay to get emotional and personal while writing your grant, just a little personal. So you build that personal connection so that, so that the funder sees truly who you are. As indigenous people of indigenous cultures, we are personal with our cultural identity and cultural landscape and how we identify ourselves as first people. Don't be offensive. Don't be too political. Be bold and be beautiful with grace and eloquence in your proposal. Give us your family background, your history. Give us your triumphs and tribulations. It's okay to be a little emotional. And that's, that's for me. I talk about growing up on a trailer, tra in a trailer home, on a homestead. I talk about it. And it's okay to talk about the struggles, but also remember that the funders wanna see solutions and the success in your project. All right, and bonus 11 before we get to Q and A's. <laughs> Hold on. Thank you, Uncle and Auntie, for cutting up the grass while I'm doing my webinar. Mahalo. Um, is it too loud? Can you guys hear me still? We can hear you fine. Okay. Good. They're, they're cutting grass here and I pay HOA fees for this. So forgive me guys. I'm going to talk as loud as I can. Bonus number 11. Be you. Be authentic. Be courageous and just do it. If you do it well, do it well. And if you're good at what you do, do it and share, share that. Share, share, share in your application. And you always have to be in Hawaiian. We call it ho'oma kaukau. Meaning you gotta be ready. You gotta collect it. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So be good. At, uh, be you. Be authentic. Be real. Be honest about your answers. Think of this process, ladies and gentlemen. I want to emphasize the importance of not only trying, but also have an organization plan while you're writing this, your statement, your letter of intent. Identify your problem, have project objectives, have project um, methods, you have a budget plan, you have future funding options, and then you have a solution to that, and then you're always evaluating your work. Those are tips for me that works for me and it may and may not work for you. But also on this chat, 
Amber and Hillary, mahalo for all of your hard work. We've also included a list of COVID-19 or the grants, competitive cultural continuation pass through or formula grants. I think there's a few block grants in there. Guys, apply, apply now. There are some active, a lot of them are active. Some of them are inactive. They're asking for donations. First People's Fund are always there for us. They believe in our vision and mission and we have to believe in them so that they continue their good work, exceptional work. Also nativeartsandcultures.org. I'm and gonna what, I'll share the screen so they can see what you're talking Thank you, about. Amber, yes, yes, yes. There's so much noise, goodness gracious, forgive me. <laughs> I think, Um, I think that I need host sharing abilities um, for that. Easy fix, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a few artists like myself added a few things to the COVID-19 grants. Um, and there's just descriptions for the grant. Also, Complete the grant two weeks to three weeks before the deadline. Do it if way before the deadline. It, a lot of us tend to wait until the deadline. Do I need to share the screen or? Um, I can send the link to. Oh, mahalo nui. Oh, oh okay. Just nui ke kani kani. There's lots of, uh, thank you so much, Kim, Alisa, mahalo. Yes, here's, let's review the top 10 granting, um, the grant writing tips, ladies and gentlemen. Never start with an I statement in any narrative. That works for me. Sell yourself and market well. Make a pitch relevant to the question. Have precise and concise answers. Research and do your homework. Research about the grants. I, uh, I don't have a nonprofit organization, so I'm so used to um, filling out applications that's pertaining to cultural and competitive grants. So there are nonprofit organization grants out there. Apply, apply now. Deadlines are coming up in July. So yeah, number, uh, number, yeah, have precise and concise answers, research and do your homework, submit your best work. Talk about your work, your accolades and your achievements. Number six, convince funder that you are good at what you do and you're doing it at, at the best of your ability. You are utilizing your proficiencies and you're doing it well. Number seven, present a logical answer with learning objectives and outcomes. So you're probably wondering what are objectives? How does that look at outcomes? Right after this, I'll, I'll give you guys an example of what is an ob objective and then what are outcomes, okay? Number eight, know the po'aya pili nui, the, the main concept of the grant. Number nine, Leave your shamefulness at home. Don't be shamed to talk about your work in a grant. And number 10, be you, be authentic, be real, be honest, be courageous, and do the work. Write the grant. Fill it out. Here are the lists, COVID-19 or other grants. Click on it for these competitive cultural grants. Look at that. So I've added a few things. Other friends of mine added a few things. Some are closed, some are inactive, yep, and some are active. You may be qualified for all of these, ladies and gentlemen. If you are a painter, if you are in broadcast, if you are a cultural specialist, a singer, a dancer, a weaver, you are qualified, yes. Pet Project Grant, oh yes, that's a new one that's got added. Artist Relief, they're still don't, don't doubt yourself. Guys, a $5,000 grant, it, may, it says easy to apply right here, I think on the bottom, artist relief, on the artist relief grant. Just put, just focus on that and apply. They're gonna look at previous applications, but they might pull out your application. So apply, 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 guys. You guys get to click on the blue, the, the website here, and it directs you straight to the actual application.
Right there, Artist Relief, yes. Artistrelief.org, yes. Don't be um, timid that they have 50,000 applications every week. You have to remember it's a competitive grant, but do your best. Take my tips. If not, you don't have to take my tips and my advice. <laughs> it'll work, it'll probably work for you, it may not. But yes, I think that's what we have so far. Oh, also, westarts.org have COVID-19 resources and grants for you. They posted new information. I talked to them this morning. They have, they've added new information. So they have some grants that are due in July. And I think I've talked to a friend. He's online, Eric Gilliam, award-winning artist. Um, to talk about your, your musical play, cultural play, apply for these grants, these fellowships. It doesn't hurt to apply. I don't like utilizing the word free. It's free, but it's not. It, it's an award for you, but it's, it's, it's for you to, we receive this award and then we're, we're gonna utilize it for our people and for our, for our career, right? For our career pathway. Do we have any, um, I think we're good so far. I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> I think we're good. Am I on top, am I behind? On the tips and everything. What was that? Are you? Am I, am I behind on time? No, you're good. You're good. Um, I need to invite people to come in. Yeah. And and for Amber and them and Hillary, thank you for your hard work. Also, can you guys exemplify your, your type of grants? Are they considered just competitive or continuation grants? Because I've reapplied too and. And you know, not all of us will get the same grant, but are they considered continuation? What kind of grants do you guys provide? Well, we have our fellowship um, yes. award. Yes. And I would say that's like fairly competitive award and um, people can apply. I mean, we've had people be fellows more than once, um, but you know, I, I do encourage people to apply um, multiple times um, and there's people that have applied five times and then they get it the sixth time so um, i definitely encourage people to continue um, and i'm going to continue too because i'm an independent artist and it's okay it's okay to get a rejection and it's okay to get accepted it's okay to try right yeah. it's okay, to try. <laughs> okay so i'm i'm trying to figure out how to add people because okay. um, aloha le aloha Oh, mahalo. I mahalo to my Starbucks coffee that allows me to function well so I can articulate the right things. The sheet is fantastic. Utilize the sheet. Click, click. Click the night away, ladies and gentlemen, and apply, 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 apply. Oh, groovy webinar. Thank you so much, Trish. Mahalo, Nui. Aloha, friends. <laughs> so I'm adding people to join the conversation right now if they would like to ask you um, questions directly. Awesome. My piano player, Aaron Nelson. We have other award-winning artists in here. Aloha, everybody. No sheer aloha. We have Grammy award-winning artists. Hey, aloha, my friend. <laughs> aloha, kumuhulale, aloha. Does anyone have questions for Kalani? I have a couple coming through. Um, Hillary has asked me a couple. Uh, okay. Let me see. Any questions? If anybody wants any of the information that we t went over, the links that we shared, um, you, I'll, uh, they're in the Facebook uh, live chat. They're also in the chat here, but if you want me to email you, um, you're welcome to email me and I can send all of this information at amber at firstpeoplesfund.org um, if you want uh, that information later, I can share it. <laughs> Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Uh, not. Can you hear me? Aloha, Eric. Gilles. Aloha, brother. <laughs> no, I don't really have a question. At first, just want to say thank you. Thank you, everybody here. Uh, grants are not something I've 
really ever considered because I've, I don't know, I guess I've just been a working musician and an artist for so long, but uh, yeah, I have this, this piece that fortunately, uh, Kalani, you got to see, um, uh, it's a, um, it's, it's billed as a one, a one man musical. Um, I did it here at the Maui Arts and Cultural Center uh, back in December and, and November. And, um, and I was set to, uh, to have this show run permanently at the Kanapali Beach Hotel. We were in the midst of uh, finalizing a deal for that, but then this all went down. And so that kind of just went completely out the window. So now I'm reimagining w where I can take this, um, this project. And um, so, you know, this, this came up and I thought, well, maybe, maybe um, I could, you know, do a, a live, a proper live taping of it or, or create an, another version of the show that then would become accessible to uh, the world at large. So, um, and it is a very, as you know, is a very cultural piece. It is, is the title of the piece is White Hawaiian, which is, I am a white Hawaiian. <laughs> and uh, it's about my family history. And I just, um, I really appreciate, I, I, I think I'm definitely going to investigate uh, the possibilities here. Yes, Eric. Everyone, Eric Gilliam is an icon, a music icon here in Hawaii, <laughs> award-winning icon. I also look up to. I love you, Eric Gilliam. Thank you for tuning in. And he has a wonderful musical, beautiful musical. You, Amber and Hillary, you guys got to come and see the musical when you have it again, right? Are you going to have it in Hawaii anytime soon? Well, that's the question. I don't know. I mean, I'm imagining that, you know, it's going to be a long time before uh, we can tour, before a piece like this will be in front of a, in front of a live audience. So I'm thinking about, you know, doing sort of like a, you know, a live taping of it, like they just did with Hamilton and a lot of, you know, live theater productions that get, uh, but I kind of want to do a hybrid version of it. That's like, it's not a film, it's not a live stage production, but it's somewhere in between. And the First so, People's Fund and Native Arts Cultures Foundation and WestArts.org, that I'll, the website that we also shared with you, they have the, the launch pad and the fellowships and these grants will help you fulfill these projects, my friend. So right. you, you're, so, apply before the, they have deadlines coming up soon. Okay. I think they, they, these fellowships fall like uh, every, every two years often because of the amount that they give out. Um, and I think, I'll, I'll talk to Amy Hanayali also. She's also a board of director for the Native Arts and Cultures Foundation. One of the governors or directors, but I, I will definitely be there. I'll text you more information. You're qualified okay. for the fellowship. You are. Kanaka, you are Hawaiian. You're an educator. You're a you. you're a beautiful artist, and and Amber and Hillary them are all about supporting our art. Yes, right. let's take can this other road. Yeah. Can you and also clear? Can you also clarify when you when you refer to it as a fellowship? Like, what what exactly does that mean? So, for Amber, do you guys want to chime in on that on on the fellowship, especially because I know there's so many log logistics behind that and uh, and what what we have to. Uh, achieve throughout those fellowships yeah do you guys want to exemplify a little bit more on that i mean every every fellowship's different like the one for the western arts alliance is going to be different than first people's fund um we have and ours is uh annually so the fellowship um is open right now and it closes in august the applications for the 2021 um fellowship year and it follows the calendar year and the way that it's been in the past is that we bring all the fellows together in the first quarter so they can network and get to know each other. That might change uh, next year with COVID. Like we might try to get people at the end of the year together. Um, and then uh, every fellow has a project that they're working on or towards. And uh, within the application, people have to submit goals. Okay. I, I see that like, the, sorry, my like screen froze. So I wasn't sure if I had frozen. Um, and then the, our fellowships um, are between $5,000 and $10,000 to support the projects. Okay, cool. And we, we also provide technical assistance and um, uh, professional development. Great, thank you. Um, Kalani is frozen on my screen. Is it? <laughs> It's a great picture of him, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Oh, I think that we we probably lost connection. Oh, there he is. Oh. Oh. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I 
Aloha, are we here? Okay. Yeah. So Eric Gilliam, you are qualified for these wonderful fellowships because you create these wonderful musicals, sold out musicals that are driven based on who we are, identity, Hawaiian culture, identity, being mm -hmm. Hapa. You know, I'm Hawaiian Filipino English. We all come, we all come from different indigenous cultures, but we are first people and you are too. And so, yes, I support you. Great. Thank you. Hey. Dying for these. Fellow, you're just going to apply. Apply and, and see the outcomes. But utilize the tip. Work. It may not work for you, but brother, you have your best work. You got the best work. Your recordings. You've got videotapings of the musicals. Right? I, I was so... I enjoyed that show called White Hawaiian. I think you should take it on the road. I think you should do workshops. Whether, whether First People's Fun wants you to talk about a musical play. We've had, I've, I've met some musical theater uh, fellows last year in their work on the, the conference. So you get to meet all these people. You get to meet all these other fellows and build this bridge and build this connection. And right. you know, my friend, remember when I first started recording, I told you I don't I didn't even know what I was doing. And no, you were remember. There, a musician encouraging me. So we need to encourage each other and support each other. Thank you, yes. brother. I appreciate it, man. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Look out for Eric Gilliam too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much, Kalani. I don't think that there, I haven't seen any other questions come through, but if anybody wants to email me a question. I have questions. Um, I have about three or three questions or so that have been from Facebook Live. Okay. Um, I think I sent them to you, but I must have had a hiccup. But yeah, I can totally ask. So Ray Takimoto, and please forgive me for my pronunciation. He asked in Facebook Live, will your recordings be available later? Um, I informed him that we do have it on our resource um, on our YouTube page, which I've shared the link a couple of times, but I can do it again. We do put these recordings up within 24 hours for everybody to have access through our YouTube page. Under our resource um, was FPF Resilience Webinar Series. So that's something that everybody can check out. Um, those who registered, um, if you have our contact information at FPF and we shared Amber's contact info too as well, if people need links again to the YouTube page. Um, Nassar, Nassari, and again, please, please forgive me on pronunciation. Um, he, <laughs> he asked, um, Kalani, can you share some of the resources, sites, et cetera, on how we can find out about available grants for musicians and apply for them? Um, I believe that the spreadsheet that you shared is pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty detailed, but is there anything else outside of those that you would recommend or any other things that you just find useful? Uh, I always Google, I always Google, you know, at this time, COVID-19, they have emergency grants, continuation, competitive cultural grants. They are coming out from every window and doors. So continue Googling. I, I'm going to consistently update the Google Docs worksheet. And then, so that's, uh, it, it's updated and available for you, Noshir. So nice to see you. The award Same meeting. here. <laughs> thank you, Kalani. That was really great presentation and a wealth of information. So, oh, you know, thank you for sharing that with us. I know it, we have a plethora of information, and I we only have this amount of time. But I'm always help. I'm always willing to help. I'm always I'm always passionate about this and helping each other out when it comes to fellowships and grants and opportunities. The primary resources are there. So you see that list. Yeah. I have a little bit more. I'll continuously update them, but go through them. It's a, it's a process, but like what I stated before, take that three, four hours out of that day and focus on those grants. They'll come in with blessings, my friend. They will. I do have one real quick question, Kalani. If, so in applying to these various grants, do you feel like there's a certain percentage that usually pans out? Is it like a 10%, 5%, or is it pretty much a hit and miss? Uh, option i've applied to maybe about 16 this last three months and got 12 
11 or 12. Oh, wow. Okay. But some That's of them right. were small amounts, some of them were big. But the thing is, you just got to apply. You have to just right. put that energy out there and submit the best work that you have and be confident and be honest about what you have and what you're articulating. Like, you have great work too as a musician, as a producer. You, you as a person. So, like, you have great, phenomenal work. Share it. Share it. And if you, again, if you get rejected, it's okay. That's not the last thing on earth, right? You, we're breathing and we're going to put on our med masks and go to public, go in the public, public and buy some groceries and come home and apply for more grants. You have to find that time, that window of opportunity to really sit at your computer and gather all of those resources and, and just do it. I encourage you to do it because once you get that letter that comes back to you, and said, congratulations, it's an award that helps you and, and allows you to move on with your career, with your endeavor, and it gives you the aspiration to be you and give back to your community. Yes. That's great. Thanks so much, Kalani. Um, <laughs> good to see you, my friend. Same here. Le Aloha, anybody have any questions? Because I know Leo have been applying for scholar, um, um, grants as well. Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> I think we're good. Thank you so much, Kalani. And thank you for, you know, making it even through like all of the, the tech difficulties today. <laughs> I am so not tech savvy. I don't have my tech team here. I think I'm pretty much of a diva. I don't know. I'm so used to being catered, but yes. <laughs> but I'm I'm on I'm so happy so happy to see my family and friends. There are all native people here that believe in in, in themselves. You got to believe in your work and believe that you you're able to achieve it with honor, humility, and dignity. Le aloha kaula, kubuhula. Thank you so much, Amber and Hillary, for this up. Hmm. Oh, I think you cut out again. Oh, bummer. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for um, making it to uh, this webinar. And on Saturday, we're having the um, Saturday in Art Live. So come back and check out our Facebook page too for any upcoming events. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you.